Welcome to About the Winelands. In this show, we will be chatting to leaders, influencers, wine producers, restaurants, and other role players. Tune in every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday for your latest episodes. You will find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram TV, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Good day, everyone, and um, welcome back to About the Winelands. Today, I'm chatting with the marketing manager of Klein Velmut, Lorraine Grobler. Hi, Lorraine, and um, welcome to About the Winelands. Hello, well, thank you so much for your time. Oh, it's a pleasure. How are you enjoying your um, time being locked down? No, it's, it's, it's a great, uh, great time to reflect and to, <laughs> to get all, everything up to date. Um, but it's been a while now and I think, um, I think everybody is, is about to, to get um, you know, back into the industry, to um, see all the old faces and to get things going again. Well, hopefully that will happen soon. So Lorraine, tell us a bit about yourself and um, how did you become involved in the wine industry? Um, uh, well, it's actually been so many years. It's, um, it's always been a part of me and my life and um, kind of where I come from. My, my mom used to work at Niederberg uh, many, many years ago. She used to work for Niederberg. She was actually um, doing, uh, working with Gunter Brusel. Um, wow. And then she wow. was at Niederberg for many, many years. And obviously when I came along, that's where I grew up. Um, in the vineyards, you know, in the offices, in the tasting room. Um, just amongst all these beautiful, wonderful old um, stalwarts from Niederberg, really. Um, yeah, and then I started studying in Stellenbosch, and then I had a car that needed petrol, and I needed <laughs> money to, to have fun with. And um, weekends, I spent my time, you know, in the tasting room at Niederberg, helping out and doing wine tours. And that's what I did. So I got some nice extra work over weekends, and... That's where my, my, my passion really started um, for the wine industry. Um, and that's about 20, 21, 22, probably about 23 years ago. So that's basically my background. And I've been part of the wine industry ever since, working for various farms, um, various sectors in the industry. So I feel very blessed that I've been able to do so many things in the industry because it's so vast <laughs> and it's so beautiful to be part of this industry. You learn a lot. Yeah, I can believe that. I say, how long have you been with uh, Klang Valmut and uh, Foothills Vineyards? It's coming up for about uh, three years now, Will. Okay. It's yeah, quite about a... three years. And before, yeah, it's been about three years now, June, July. It's been about three years. Um, and prior to that, I uh, used to work for Distel for many, many years. Um, mm -hmm. And Rebox Kluwerf, I used to work for Rebox Kluwerf. I've done some sales for Springfield and for Jordan. Yeah, many beautiful, amazing big names in the industry that I was able to work for. Oh, that's the blessing, right? So, um, <laughs> can you give us a bit of <laughs> history um, of the estate? Yeah, well, it's, it's such a beautiful little um, hidden away gem. Um, Jane Balmut, many, many years ago, and I firmly believe this, I think when about 100 years ago, everybody had this name, they wanted to to call every farm Klein Valmut. Um, there's about, I think, just in our um, in our area, there's about three or four farms called Klein Valmut. But um, we call Klein Valmut Wine and Olive Estate. Um, and about 15 years ago, Glenn Hess and Tim Featherby they bought the farm from the Maibos. Um and then they basically took out. Um, everything that was on the farm. So it used to be a fruit farm and way back when it used to be a tobacco farm. Wow. So I don't know if you know Wraithby. It's, it's a little tiny uh, community just outside of Stellenbosch. Yeah, I know exactly where it is. So it's a beautiful little hidden away um, area in Stellenbosch. And there's a few wine farms. There's a few of us on that road. But um, so Glenn, Hess and Tim bought the farm about 15 years ago, took out all the fruit trees and just reinvented this old style um, estate. Um, that's when Benny Boyson was also um, employed. He's our viticulturist and our winemaker. So he does both. And he consulted, I think, with, um, yeah, with Glenn and with Tim. And the 
three of them basically took the farm uh, to where it is now. You, all three of them, hugely passionate about the wine industry. Um, all three incredible um, um, people, really. And um, they make a great team. Um, yeah, and I think Benny um, decided to plant a Shiraz, uh, some Sauvignon Blanc, some Semillon, some, um, some Viognier. So there's quite a lot of uh, viticulture, you know, on the farm itself. And we've got about, uh, the farm's about 40 hectares big, and we've got a tiny bit of olive trees as well that we produce some nice olive oil from. Well, that's awesome. So when, when a guest um, come to your estate, you know, what can you, what can they experience? I see that your uh, wine tastings are only open with a, um, by invitation, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, well, we, we've actually been, um, you know, been thinking should we open up a tasting room, and it's one of the things that, we, that we're looking at doing. Um, but what we're doing at the moment, or before lockdown, um, and it works for us really well, we host some really nice wine tastings on the farm. So we invite industry colleagues, we invite guests, clients, customers, we invite to the farm, and then we basically do this nice, uh, like a wine tasting experience. On the farm, um, I'll do a presentation. Benny will do a presentation. We'll do some, you know, we'll do, we'll taste some of the wines. We'll go for vineyard walks. So we do quite a lot of um, wine functions, I'll say. Um, and we've also been doing some food and wine evenings on, on the farm. Um, but we are obviously always open to people coming to the farm. I'm there most days. Um, the days that I'm not in the trade, I am working on the farm. So it's always nice to see, you know, when people arrive and they're at the gate and they say, oh, they've never seen or they've never tasted our wine, can they come in? And obviously everybody will be welcomed um, with open arms and with glass of bubbly. Hey, there you go. Now you've invited the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> so my cell phone number is actually on the gate. So whenever people arrive, they just phone me they're so I can there. open the gate. And I do, I do prefer drinking wine instead of doing some advert. That's, that's what I love doing. So, yeah, whoever, you, you're welcome to pop in. There you I go. Mean, there a lot. You also offer um, accommodation on the estate. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yes, well, we've got a, a beautiful boutique um, guest house on the farm. Um, consists of about five um, self-catering cottages, um, each with underfloor heating and it's very luxurious and it's absolutely stunning. Um, yeah, we host you know, quite a lot of conferences, small weddings um, and events. So when people do conferencing, they can stay on the farm in the guest house. Um, we've got a lovely conference facility, um, but it's just a really nice hidden away venue for guests even now going forward. You know, if people want to, and we're allowed to, if we can go out and go and spend some time on a farm, I can actually encourage people to come to the farm because you are going to be self-isolated self -isolated actually on the farm because you won't be able to see people because you know, we're tucked away and you can just do your own thing. So yeah. the guest house is a four and a half star guest house. Well, in my mind, it's a five star guest house and um, it's absolutely beautiful and peaceful and tranquil. You can go for lovely walks on the farm, um, some nice birding. We've got some exquisite birds on the farm. Obviously, I'm not leaving the wine out. I mean, you can have breakfast. You can have wine for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it's just a, it's a lovely little gem, the guest house. Okay, awesome. So um, your corporate conferences, how many people can you actually accommodate for that? Um, well, you know, easy. We can do about 80, 80 to 100. We can do quite easily. Yeah. So that's quite um, convenient because you also, you know, with your with your um, um, your location, it's not too far from the airport. So that's somebody that wants to come do something in the winelands can easily come do it at your place. That's that's what it makes it such an ideal place. Well, is the fact that we are about twenty minutes from Cape Town Airport. We're about ten minutes from the R forty four. So uh, you know, in terms of being central, um, we're right there, literally twenty minutes from the airport from Stellenbosch to Somerset West. Um, so, you, you know, you're accessible. You can access bigger cities like Stellenbosch and Somerset West and even Cape Town. But then you can also um, 
um, be quite private, um, you know, on the farm, which makes it a really, really nice venue for that. We actually had quite a lot of um, conferencing um, meetings happening. Uh, delegates from Joburg, actually international groups have visited us. Um, wow. and, spend, and they come year after year, they come back. Um, to stay by us. And obviously word of mouth is such a wonderful thing and it makes our industry so, so beautiful as people talk, you know, and it's, we don't, um, we haven't been around for many, many years, like, you know, all our other peers. But I think when people start talking and when there's something special and nice about a place, you know, people do go by word of mouth. Yeah, that's true. So um, in terms of your olive production, right, you said you have a small olive grove, um, your olive, olive oil, where is that sold? Um, well, at the moment, we're selling our olive oil from the farm. Um, we've got a few outlets in Stellenbosch and Somerset West, um, not huge. We, our production is about 5,000 bottles. So um, because Glenn and Tim, of our directors, they live in KZN, they live in Peter Maritzburg, they do take a bit of our olive oil and they sell it up in Peter Maritzburg along oh. with our wines. The olive oil is, is, is mainly found on the farm. Um, we, you know, it's look we don't produce that huge amount to 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 have a huge retail following but we'll probably get there but at the moment it's only from the farm itself okay interesting so let's talk about the important stuff tell us a little bit i mean i can hear you want to talk about the wine so tell us a little bit about the wines <laughs> <laughs> it's good you think i'm thirsty <laughs> oh well yeah we've got um we've got actually for a small little wine farm we've got a huge range we've got about 11 wines in our portfolio um biggest the biggest production would be our sauvignon blanc um and then we've got the shiraz um we've got some the semi on the uni so there's there's about 11 wines in our portfolio and all quite unique all, all 11 of them are beautiful unique wines um we bless because we have that, that lovely ocean breeze you know coming from the atlantic ocean swooping over our vineyards so we have that um we have that happening every day on the farm it's 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 a beautiful thing to actually experience you know it's um it's as the crow flies about five kilometers from from Falls bay but um yeah i think in terms of production the biggest amount that we will produce or the biggest wine in our portfolio would be the sauvignon blanc and then after that would be the cedar. Um, and that's, that's very, very popular. We do sell that in most of the retail shops in our area, Stellenbosch and Somerset West, and also in Cape Town. So, um, yeah, lovely old style wines. We've got, you know, the cedar, we've got the Shiraz as well. I think a lot of people get quite confused because there's two. Um, but essentially, you know, as you know, they are the same wines, but we, it's two different styles of winemaking. So the Cedar would be, that's our new vintage 2017, is a lovely old style, um, French inspired, you know, red wine. Where our Shiraz is a beautiful South African um, kind of juicy, big red wine offering. Um, so I, I can definitely encourage people to, um, to look out for that, you know, on the shelves. And then our Sauvignon Blanc is just lovely and fresh and ripe and, you know, ripe and crisp, um, especially because of that lovely terroir and the, um, where we situate it. So we do really benefit from, from the climate in our, in our area. Oh, that's awesome. Just a quick interruption, but I do need to remind you that we are currently in a very difficult time. The South African government has set up a fund where businesses and individuals can donate to support our country through this crisis. Go to the website now and add your small donation, www.solidarityfund.co.za. Please join us all in the fight against COVID-19. That is at www.solidarityfund.co.za. Now, let's get on with the show. So, um Besides um, local sales, um, do, you, do you export as well? We do export. Well, we export um, actually quite a big amount to, to Europe. So we've got um, some great colleagues in Germany um, and in the Netherlands and then also now in Belgium that we export to. Um, so we've got a nice following in Europe and it's, it's definitely picking up. You know, it's, it took a while for us to 
expand our produce and i think you know as a as a brand and as a you know as a very very small wine estate um we obviously our volumes we don't we can't really compete with the, with the bigger guys out there but it's um the the amount that we produce is actually just perfect for what we're doing at the moment you know we we are blessed to be able to export and then we're also blessed to send it into our local market and every year well we we basically sell out of each vintage so and it really really makes my it makes me happy and you know as a, as a salesperson it makes me very happy and i think also you know um we go in some way you know the farm itself is definitely getting a little bit more um awareness there's a bit more awareness out there so yeah we we love doing what we can at the moment you know the the local market is very important for us but then also you know the export the export that we're doing now um yeah makes us very proud well that's amazing so i mean within with the coronavirus and the lockdowns and stuff like that you know everyone has to really start rethinking their business models so um do yeah. you guys have any changes or new ideas in mind on that front yeah well look we've got to keep up with the times and you know things are evolving even in, in normal times if i can put mm. it like that but we really you know from a sales perspective we've got to be really in a, innovative and we've got to think you know out of the box and because we're a multi-faceted business you know we've got the guest house we've got the wines we've got the olive oil so i think ideally what i'd like to do is just incorporate you know all three kind of sectors from from you know from the estate um the wine itself we're gonna have to do you know what i'm doing with you now is such a beautiful thing that you've got this platform so that people can actually talk about their products and their their ranges and their wine so thank you for you thank you for having this platform because i think this is also going forward this would be um a very important platform for for sales people and especially wine people to talk about and for people to experience the product maybe not always having the, the, the product in hand but to be able to talk about it you know with passion and with love because that's what that's what make people buy wine hey it's it's stories and people talking about wine and where it comes from and you know stories of, of the owners and the winemakers and the dog and the farm and the you know the queer and his scarper <laughs> in my true. mind I, you know, when i talk about wine when i do wine shows you know i always um i i I want to talk from my heart and from from experience and i think that's what makes people buy that bottle of wine um and then also they remember the wine so i think going forward well yeah is having a having a platform like this maybe doing wine sales online wine sales mm -hmm. uh, you know it's a safer option um yeah doing interaction on um a virtual interaction like we're doing now i think going forward and then obviously from the guest house point of view i think that's going forward we might be able to you know the guest house i think people will be aching to go somewhere else and just to experience um something other than four walls that they've been staring at for the last five weeks or four weeks and so i'm i'm totally positive that you know this will do this too shall pass and we will get um we will get through to the other side of you know, when people do want to come out to the guest house or they want to come and visit the farm, they're definitely very, very welcome to pop in, to come and stay by us. Um, yeah, I, I would really, really encourage people to come and have a look and see if it's somewhere where they would like to come for weekends or even a midweek breakaway. Well, I think you're right. I mean, once things are a little bit more back to normal, people will be itching to get out. So any, you know, local, especially, especially local tourism will, will really um, increase in terms of, of virtual experiences, I mean, um, I think that is something you're right. That, that trend has been there, but it's now being um, escalated and really speeded up that people need yeah. to start thinking about this stuff, right? And um, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty open to, to having virtual um, wine tastings and all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, the more we talk about the wine and the more people get awareness, you know, the, mo the more interesting it is for people. And there's no reason why we can't share a bottle of wine talking to people. I'd like to say your directors on on Kwazulu Natal. I mean, people can yeah. actually, you know, I, I assume people phone each other regularly and now, you know, with all these new technologies and stuff, there's no reason why people can't do a virtual wine tasting and get more people involved. 
And I, yeah. I think the other thing that will happen is once we get back to, you know, physical taste things and physical things, there's going to be an interaction between um, things happening in the physical world and, and things in the virtual world. I, I see that trend a lot when I talk to people about conferencing, um, where, yeah. where conferences are now adding a virtual capability where people can stream in, uh, they stream the conference live and people can log in from a, from a um, you know, yeah. outside destination and also get the information. So I think those things are yeah. really things to look at. And it, it opens up our, our, um, our, it opens up to everybody and everything. And I think we'll be, we are able to just access so many more um, ears and, and people. And, you know, like I've been seeing how, how people do all sorts of things online. And it actually, I think it inspires people to also, you know, do do other things online. And really, I think it is the way the future is, is being molded um, in, a, in a very strange way now. now. You know, I, I would love to have a glass of wine with somebody sitting in KZN. I mean, having my viewpoints and listening to somebody else's viewpoints, you know, uh, a thousand or 900 kilometers away, I think it's a wonderful experience. And to be able to do that, or even abroad, you know? So yeah, I, I definitely, um, I quite like the idea and I think we should all just uh, be aware that things will, I don't think our industry will ever be 100% the same again. So we all need to kind of adapt to new ways and new things going forward. Yeah, I think it's going to be better, right? People, are, I mean, yeah. I've talked to lots of people about this and, and you know, people forget that our world has been through the Great Depression, two world wars and yeah. People are social animals. 18 months from now, we've all forgotten. This will be the talk in every bar and, and every yeah. right tasting in every restaurant and stuff like that. And then we'll have a new thing happening. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yep. So, Lorraine, uh, your wine journey has been quite fascinating. So, what is the most important thing that you've learned from your wine journey? Gosh, well, um, there's, there's, so many, there's so many facets to, to that question. Um, I think as a well, being part of this industry has taught me um, to realize actually that everybody, um, we're all, all on the same train going the same way. We're all going somewhere. We all want, we want the same things for, you know, our brands and for who, whatever, whoever we're working for. But I think treating people with respect and treating people with, with um, treating people the same, um, I think is a big thing for me. Um, in, you know, the people that pick the grapes, the, the guys that actually uh, do the pruning, the guys that actually make the wine, you know, the, the farm owners. Um, I think for me, it's an important thing to, and I would like to actually, yeah, for me, um, it needs to be, everybody needs to be treated the same because everybody is going, everybody's on the same journey and everybody is contributing massively to this beautiful industry, you know, to this, to the winemaking process. So I think, yeah, just treating people with respect and, and the same and just kind of taking hands as an industry, taking hands and taking hands as a farm, you know, as farm workers, as, as directors, and just going going together, going forward together. <laughs> that's that's what, yeah, that's quite important for me. I think in my in my day-to-day -day life, respect is a huge thing. And I think in our industry, I do find that, I think there is a, a huge amount of respect in our industry. I think we've, there's so many amazing people. There's so many amazing things happening in the industry. So um, I think that's quite an important aspect for me, yeah, respect. Can you give us your very own wine quote or um, your favorite wine quote? <laughs> um, I think a celebration of taste and a celebration of life. Um, I think from our, from our estate, um, we, Every, everything that we do, you know, we do with, with a, a lot of love and a lot of passion. And we actually, it's almost like handcrafted um, the brand and, the, and what we do on the, on the estate. Um, but I think a celebration of taste would be, that would be our motto. And if I had to put that on a bumper sticker, I think that would be my bumper sticker. <laughs> celebration <laughs> of taste. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How do people get hold of you guys if they want more information or, I mean, I know your cell phone number is on the farm gate, but is there any other way for people to get hold of you? <laughs> um, well, your yeah, Instagram, Facebook, um, uh, email address, yeah, 
I've got it all. You can you can contact me in, in any of those ways. And then really just popping up on the farm and just making contact. Um, bring your friends. You know, if you want to do a Friday evening, I think it was just before we we started, or just before you know the the whole the COVID nineteen thing happened. We were actually talking about having Friday evening sunset. Um, events on the, on the farm because it actually lends itself to that you know we've got a beautiful big stoop area where we can sit there's a beautiful pool so just wanted to incorporate you know that and the pool and the, the sunset and the just the big beautiful trees we do wine tastings on the farm on friday evenings you know gathering people from three to four to and um, three four o'clock in the afternoons until you know whenever at, at night but um we are definitely we'd like to still do that that sounds awesome. Yeah, we'd love to do that. So I think when everything's back to normal again, I'm going to do um, mailers. I'll do. I'll put it on our Facebook page. Just just getting people up to the farm, letting them you know experience the, the the farm and the the wines, the olive oils, and just really what we do because it's it's all kind of hands on deck. Everybody's just lacquer. I'm going to buy a lacquer, amazing means or be plus. I'm going to buy a lacquer psalm. So I just really want people to come out and visit us and come and get the wine from us on the farm um, and your olive oil and just pop in and say hi and come and stay on the farm. Do your conferencing, come get married there, have a birthday on the farm. So yeah, I'll encourage people to to get in contact with me if they want any of those, those right. things. Lorraine, that's awesome. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. It was a pleasure talking Thank to you. you. Thank you for supporting our show. If you would like to get more exposure for your business, please have a look at our sponsorship options. Thanks again for supporting About the Winelands. Please follow us on YouTube and on our social media channels. All details and links are in the description.